Good morning, Jim. K5AZK. Uh, I have a little bit for you. Uh, Sulphur Springs. I've talked to Uruguay, um, Germany, Saudi Arabia. It's one of the oldest questions about humans. Why do we like what we like? WA5JV, K5AZK. Good morning. Uh, where to? Well, explanations draw on everything from nature versus nurture to original sin to evolution. All right, well, I've got one for DeRitter. It does have a phone number. It goes to uh, JR down there, okay? But in the case of ham radio enthusiasts, Joe and Keith, it's simpler than that. She met a very interesting boy. What I wanted for my birthday that year, and my father got me, was a black plug and a black socket so that I could build an extension cord. An extension cord? Yeah, at age five. John Keith's been tinkering with electronics as long as he can remember, starting with homemade extension cords and graduating to Hellfire missiles and weather satellites. And even as a young man, he knew his future wife would have to be okay with his unique talents. Is it safe to say he changed your world? Uh-huh. <laughs> He did. Is that a good uh-huh? Oh, or well, a... it depends on who you're talking to. <laughs> Actually, my girlfriend at the time introduced us, and I suspect it was because she was trying to get rid of me. <laughs> but anyway, about our, I don't know, second or third date, I took Joanne out to the shop. I'd opened a radio repair shop when I was 14. Now, you might not think a radio repair shop's a great place for a date, but John was already an expert in electricity. She was interested. She didn't run. She didn't run, like all normal people would. <laughs> so I knew, aha, that's, this is a keeper. And sure enough, 49 years later, we're still doing the same things we did 49 years ago. She talks on the radio and I build them. Well, it's been half a century of ham radio since John and Joanne Keith fell in love. And everything at their East Texas home signals that this is an obsession. They have their own 70-foot radio antenna, an electronics workshop, two broadcast rooms, and even vanity license plates with their coal signs on them. I'm on usually three to four hours a day, uh, six days a week. Joanne runs what's called a traffic net. Her group meets over the airwaves at specific times to pass along messages as a public service. On our net, we have medical doctors, uh, PhD doctors, uh, judges, farmers, it's just the average person that gets interested in it. Back during the Vietnam War, Joanne's traffic net and many others relayed messages home from deployed soldiers. And these days, even with a cell phone in every pocket, amateur radio operators are still saving the day when disasters take out our modern methods. When Hurricane Katrina or Rita or one of those blew in. Were you here helping people? There was shootings in the hospital. Mm -hmm. And we were able to get word to the authorities there in New Orleans, I guess it was. Wow. And got them help. It was ham radio operators mm -hmm. who... Yeah, we notified because there wasn't any other communications. You know, and that's the beauty of the amateur radio. Is it's still there, it takes no infrastructure whatsoever. You take a box this big that's a radio, you hook it to a speaker and string out some wire and you're able to communicate. And since ham radio could be our last resort in an emergency, we thought learning how to do it was a sound idea. Oh, nothing heard, uh, KA5 AZK, this W5. W5 and this is KA5, KA5 AZK, is that who we are? <laughs> She's giving me direction from wherever <laughs> she is. Okay, so maybe we should leave the emergency broadcast to the experts. John and Joanne Keith are certainly that. 
And you can bet that no matter what happens in the world around them, you can always find this couple on the same wavelength. It's just what I do. I did it for a living. I did it when I was a kid. And now I'm an old retired man, I still do it. Do you ever think you'll get tired of it? No, there's no way. No, I'd rather quit eating than doing this. We'll see you back on that. WA5JAV, K5As, and KQSY.